Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with a production video here on the channel. I haven't done one of these in a while, primarily because my workflow hasn't changed all that much in four years. I bought a TriCaster Mini back in late 2014 that allows me to do all the things that you typically see here on the channel, including switching cameras live here. I can do uh, some fancier stuff like this and have things running in the background. And what's been nice about this is that I don't have to edit a shot like this. I can shoot it in real time and then my editing for the YouTube channel is a lot simpler. That's been my workflow since I started doing this. Uh, editing here on the channel is actually the least time consuming thing that we do because we get most of our shots done uh, live in real time here while we're recording everything and it makes life a lot easier. So that's been the workflow and everything's just been working so great I haven't changed it up all that much. But over the last year, I've been using a new technology inside of this workflow called NDI which allows you to capture video over your network. And here's a great example of, as to how it works. So uh, right here, I've got my uh, TriCaster control panel up here, and I'm going to just go out to input eight here and bring in my gaming computer, for example. And I can just bring it in like the four wired sources I have in inputs one through four, and I can switch over to it and bring it in just like any other video source. Uh, but the computer is on the other end of my room here, plugged into the network. There's no HDMI cable running from the computer to the TriCaster. It's just going over the network and delivering a, a very low latency image here that uh, looks fantastic, doesn't tax the PC all that much. In fact, I didn't see much of a performance degradation here at all. Uh, yet I can bring this in in a much more convenient way. Uh, likewise, you can uh, bring other things into the mix here. So you could get this Connect Spark Box that I reviewed a little while ago, uh, plug this into your network, plug an HDMI source into it, and then any HDMI source can get pushed out over the network. Uh, this uses some compression technology too, so it even works over Wi-Fi. And as we saw in that review, it worked terrifically. Uh, we also have something like this PTZ optics camera here that we'll be reviewing later in the week. Uh, this one connects up with an Ethernet cable, same thing. Video comes from the camera out to your production device and you can stream it out. You can even do things like capture a desktop, even from devices that are not all that powerful, like this little uh, uh, Microsoft Surface Go we reviewed the other day. So I could bring in its desktop, for example, or I can even bring in its web camera or any other thing uh, that is attached to it, uh, all just by connecting things up to my network and bringing them in, uh, just like a traditional wired HDMI device may be brought in. And what's cool about this new technology is that they've opened it up. So it is free uh, to use it with OBS and vMix and other uh, lower cost production and streaming applications that are out there. And it's supporting now uh, most of the things that people are using. It's a real game changer. And I wanted to just walk through some uh, workflows with it that I'm doing so you can get a better feel for this technology in this review. So I do want to let you know, though, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, that everything in this video, with the exception of the PTZ optics camera here, I paid for with my own funds. They provided this free of charge to the channel for an upcoming review, so we'll be talking about it in more detail shortly. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how I'm using this now in my workflow. So the device I've been using the most here on the channel is the Kinect Spark. It allows me to take any HDMI input and then push it out over the network. Uh, so right now, we're using it to show the TriCaster's control panel, so we can do some demoing of all of that process. So this is what I look, look at and look like uh, when I am working on a video. But they've added now some pan, tilt, zoom functionality to it. So if you look down in the lower left-hand corner, I can click on this, for example, and it will uh, actually do a digital zoom. And it does a very nice job of scaling the video, too, here. So if you are doing things with a PC and you wanted to kind of zoom in and out of something, uh, you can do that fairly easily now uh, with the Spark. And PTZ controls are built into NDI. Uh, so when we plug in this camera in a little bit, we can control it uh, using the TriCaster's interface. But if you use other applications like vMix or OBS, there are ways to control cameras that way too, including uh, controlling the Spark here. So this is a really flexible device. I found it works very reliably over AC Wi-Fi. 
Uh, in fact, my local high school just bought a bunch of these because they want to up the game uh, when covering sporting events on campus. And they're going to be integrating uh, Wi-Fi attached devices here running with a battery to get uh, some additional shots in. And it really works out quite well. Uh, the latency on these are, are not all that bad as we saw in the original review that I did. I had audio going in analog to the TriCaster, yet it was staying largely in sync with uh, the spark here. Uh, they say you get about a field of latency, which, you know, give or take is about a frame or so of latency for audio synchronization. And if you are, of course, bringing in audio from the camera that's attached to the spark, everything will be synced up perfectly. But the latency is enough that you don't want to play a game in real time through the NDI signal coming in. You'll probably still want to have your main display doing that. Uh, another feature that is really neat is what they have added now uh, to the Windows software suite. So if you go on the New Tech website, and I'll put a link to it down below in the video description, uh, you can download a package of software for Windows. They have some on the Mac too, but the Windows software is a little bit more versatile. Uh, that adds something called the New Tech Scan Converter, and that runs down in your uh, little system tray here. And what I can do, let's go back over to my TriCaster control panel. Uh, if I wanted to bring in what's on the uh, little uh, Go screen here, I can go up to my input 7, and you can see it's finding all these NDI sources on the network automatically. Uh, and I can just go over to the Go's desktop and bring that in, and we should see that popping up on screen. There it is. And I can just go ahead and switch to that. And now I'm able to, with very low latency, uh, stream my desktop, including games as you saw from my gaming PC a little while ago, and you are off and running there. Uh, it's configured just through its little system uh, thing down here, and you can get uh, the frame rate set. I've got it set to 30p because that's what I'm capturing at right now, but it supports up to 60p. I do recommend when you use the scan converter that you have your computer connected to Ethernet uh, because it is a heavy bandwidth consuming activity here to do this kind of stuff. So you probably want to make sure you're on uh, gigabit Ethernet and you have your streaming computer and all of your devices coming in also connected up via Ethernet, at least for the scan converter here. Um, but as you can see, it works exceptionally well and uh, brings us in like any other source. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you how it works with OBS also, because it really is cool that you can do this now, not only with a you know, couple thousand dollar TriCaster, but also uh, for free elsewhere. And then if I wanted to go back and maybe bring in the webcam, I can do that too. So if I go over to input six here, I can select uh, the webcam on the uh, surface go here and you can see we're actually bringing in both sources simultaneously i can point the camera at myself here and say hi uh, this might have a little bit more latency uh, latency is largely determined by uh, the sending device the receiving device and your network conditions so there's always going to be a little bit of difference here or there but uh, it's pretty cool just how good this looks actually uh, just coming in over the ethernet network and how fast it all came in now if you have a smartphone an android phone or an iphone uh, you can also bring in video via the ndi app that's available for about 20 bucks on these platforms the video quality isn't always the best on this it, it does a max of 720p right now so i hope maybe they integrate some of the hx technology to give you uh, higher resolution, but I can just show you just how this works real quick here. So I've got to uh, eliminate a few sources here on my list just because I've got um, too many things going right now. So my TriCaster Mini can take a maximum of four NDI inputs along with four physical inputs. So I'm just going to go up to this setting here and just change that. So let me zoom back out here so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to input seven here. I'm going to change this to um, my iPhone, which I have to turn on and load up here. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to load up uh, the NDI app here on my iPhone. Let me just back out of this real quick here and show you what this looks like. So here's the app here. It just loads up like a little camera thing might. And all you have to do is just click this button here. And when you do that, it makes itself available as an NDI source. So if we go back to our control panel here and I go over to input seven and uh, just select the iPhone now instead of the desktop that we have, uh, we should be able to see that. So here's my iPhone, and uh, there we go. We'll switch to input 7 here and take a look at this. Right now, this is streaming over in uh, 480p, but I could turn it up to 720p. Uh, my only issue right now is that I broke my iPhone 10 yesterday. I was going to use that in the demo here. Uh, this is a 6S. It doesn't work as well with the 6S, but I did find the 7 
and up do a little better on the iPhone side, primarily because of the bandwidth. So you probably want to get a newer phone to do this reliably, but you can very easily, as you saw, just bring in a phone source just like any other camera right into your production workflow. Really pretty cool. Let's boot up the PTZ Optics camera real quick, show you how that works, and then we'll do some real world examples using chroma key. Uh, now what's cool about this particular camera is that it can be powered by ethernet. So you can put this up in a ceiling somewhere, just bring a single ethernet cable over to it. It'll work along pretty much the maximum cable length you can get for an ethernet cable. And there you go. You've got the camera powered by the same cable that will be delivering data from and to it. Uh, so that is pretty convenient. So what we can do now is switch over to our uh, control panel here. And again, it will show up uh, just like some of the other NDI sources we looked at earlier. So we can see down here, PTZ optics camera is on channel one. I can grab that and uh, there we go. And we can look and see, uh, let's get that up there. There you go. You can see the view from the camera. We've got some cleaning to do in the office today, as you can see, it's been a very busy month. Uh, but I can tilt the camera here and zoom in if I want. I'll switch back over to the control panel. So if you look on the uh, lower portion of the screen there, you can see me controlling the zoom here with the mouse. Uh, and that is how it works. So you have full control over this. You can also set presets so I can have the camera like automatically uh, lock on to that position or I can adjust things. And if I want to set a preset on the TriCaster, I just click on this little photo icon here. Uh, that will lock it in place. It'll put a little thumbnail in there to kind of prompt me as to what I'm going to be looking at. And I can very easily switch from one position uh, to the other here, uh, all via NDI. So the video is coming in from the camera, but I'm sending instructions back to it. And as you'll see in a few minutes, you can also do this with free software like OBS too. So lots of convenience here uh, happening over the network. So let's move on now to a real world example with some chroma key where we're going to demonstrate not only uh, doing a distant uh, transmission of video, but also using NDI to monitor what we are doing in front of that green screen. So here's a real world application. I'm in front of my green screen now. So if Corey wants to switch the camera real quick to James's view here, you can see this is what it really looks like. But if we switch back to uh, the main view here, you can see I'm in this virtual set that the TriCaster can put together. And what I'm doing right now is actually standing across the room. And if we switch back to James now, we're going to go over to the PTZ camera here. This is that same camera we had on the desk a minute or two ago, uh, but it's transmitting back via the cable here with me in front of that green screen. And what's really cool is that you can also get video out of whatever devices you're doing via NDI. So on the little Surface Go tablet here, sorry, James, I just messed up your shot. Um, we are running with their monitor app that's part of this package. So you can see it's showing us what we look like here in front of the green screen on this monitor, uh, but there's nothing connected to it. It's completely wireless, just getting its video from the TriCaster via NDI. As you can see, just like we did before, we have all of the different sources available to us uh, on the monitoring app here. So I could even switch to different inputs here. So if I wanted to see what input three on my TriCaster has, right now it's got nothing, but I can uh, switch over to input two, for example, with the touch screen and get uh, the shot of my empty desk at the moment. So you have the ability really to uh, tune into things. Thanks, Corey. Uh, tune into things as you go here. So it's really very, very flexible. And we're even transmitting this image that you're seeing right now over NDI back to the other end of the room. But I could also be on the other end of the house or if I'm on a larger facility, the other end of a campus, for example. It's very, very flexible and you can see the kind of production workflows you can do with it. Now, as I mentioned, you don't need a fancy high-end video switcher to make all of this stuff work. It also works with free software like OBS. So I've got OBS running here right now with nothing going on. And I installed the NDI plugin that I'll put as a link down below in the video description. So we're going to click on NDI source and we'll call this one gaming PC. And I've got a benchmark running on it right now. So we'll go and select our gaming PC. Again, we're getting a list of all the available NDI sources on the network, just like we had before with the TriCaster. I'm going to click OK. And in a second now, we should get that benchmark running. It's actually running very nicely on the screen here at 60 FPS. We only record the video here at 30, but it looks great. Uh, it's running just fine. And I'm going to add now a second source and I could bring in you know, something I'm directly capturing if I want. So if I did have an HDMI uh, input capture device plugged into this PC, I could run it. Uh, but I can also add in additional NDI sources. So we'll call this one camera and maybe I will select my TriCaster's first input, which is my camera that I'm talking to you on right now. 
and there I am. Uh, and I can, of course, do some compositing here and just make that window smaller. And now we've got uh, two NDI sources streaming in here, just like they would on a regular hardwired connection. And you can start to see all the different things you can do now. And the other thing that's kind of neat about OBS is that you can also output this over NDI too. So if you wanted to use OBS in a different part of your network and stream it out somewhere else, you can go to the NDI output settings, make sure that main output is set to on, hit OK. And now we're going to go over to our Surface Go, which is also on our network. And we'll go over to the studio monitor now. And we should actually see uh, the OBS system here showing up as a source. So let's see what happens here. We've got the software loaded up. I've got a bunch of desktops here, so I have to search through the one that I think it is. Here we go. So we've got OBS here on the list. I'm going to select that. And there we go. We've got OBS running. I can now uh, pull up my uh, camera here and show you how that looks. So here I am talking to the camera. And uh, we've got a little bit of latency here just because we're going in and out here. But you can get a good feel for um, really just how well this appears to work, not only acting as an input source, but also as an output source, again, through OBS uh, running on the same computer. And if you're curious what kind of resources this consumes, we've got it now uh, running on a Dell XPS from late 2015. This has a sixth generation i7 quad core processor, a 6700HQ, along with a 960M NVIDIA GPU on board. And you can see it's not really taxing this older computer, but the same kinds of hardware limitations you might be running into with using OBS with traditional capture methods will apply here too, because you're still processing uh, the same resolution of video. But I don't think the NDI here is adding all that much overhead to the mix. So I think generally, uh, you will not see a performance hit on your uh, streaming devices here, yet you will add a uh, significant flexibility here. And I'm really quite pleased with just how well the latency appears here uh, with the NDI coming in. You can see my uh, lip sync here is pretty close on the Dell uh, running through OBS right now. So there you go. You can see how NDI kind of works here in a nutshell. Basically, it uh, eliminates the need to have long HDMI cables running everywhere. You can just get devices hooked up to your network and everything can just flow on through. Uh, the scan converter software that we're using on my gaming PC doesn't add all that much overhead. In fact, the GPU it will use is the one built into your Intel processor, not your main graphics processor. So I don't anticipate any real performance hits here. Uh, some of the lower end hardware won't do as well, of course. So like the little Surface Go here is usable, but I think you'll have better performance on something that uh, is a little bit faster than it. Uh, but you do have some options now to bring video in in different ways. If you don't want to buy the Spark Box, which costs about 500 bucks, what you can do is get a compatible capture device, uh, have that run in through the scan converter, and have your PC basically act as the NDI Spark Box to uh, bring your video to other places in your home or school or whatever. So you can really play with this and start thinking about all the different ways you can bring video in and out of devices now that the uh, limitation of cable length is kind of out of the equation. And again, you can play with this completely for free. I'll put a link to the software where you can download it down below so you can start playing with Scan Converter, the studio monitor to uh, watch what's going on and download some of those plugins for OBS and you are off and running. So good stuff. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.